Uh, well, our next presenter uh, is me. So I'm going to stand over here. I think stand where you are. Actually, yeah, present. I mean, uh, and I'm going to talk about uh, something close to everyone's heart. Okay. Here's Ivan. You ready? I'm ready. Who owns a property in some land? Because you can't actually own property. You can only defend territory. So if I was to squat in your house, you would have two basic options. You could either try, try to fight me off physically, or you could invoke the law. Now the law is the invention <laughs> designed to uh, support this idea of ownership. Without law, you can't have private property. Uh, and in order for the law to be taken seriously, it has to have consequences. Okay, so then, um, if you break the law, you can be fined, or uh, flogged, or hanged, made homeless. Now, understanding how the law works is crucial to understanding how the money supply works. Now, historically, uh, money uh, banking originated with goldsmiths. They had strong rooms where they kept their gold, and other people asked if they could keep their gold in the strong room. And so the receipts that the goldsmiths issued were used as currency instead of exchanging the physical gold. And the goldsmiths noticed that very few people actually came back to the strong room to retrieve their gold. So this gave them the idea of issuing loans based on other people's gold. What they didn't know couldn't harm them. So eventually the goldsmiths became banks. And they issued far more loans than they actually had gold reserves for. So this promise to pay on demand became a fiction. And today, 90% of all the money in the world is held on computers as a digital illusion. And we now have something called fiat currency, which is basically currency that is worthless because there's nothing of value to back it up. There's no gold standard or anything like that, which means that governments can uh, basically invent money out of nothing. Uh, <laughs> because you know, there's nothing to back it up, so they, they, can, they can, all this quantitative easing and all that kind of stuff is basically just inventing money. And it's just a, a numbers game then. So I'll give you an example of how this works. We have the fractional reserve banking system. Say I take out a loan of £100,000. The bank is legally obliged to hold some of that back as reserve, let's say 10%. So it holds back £10,000, which leaves it uh, £90,000 to lend out to someone else. It has to hold back 10% of that £9,000, which leaves it £81,000 to lend to someone else. And so it goes on. So from an initial deposit of £100,000, the banks can lend out effectively nine times that amount at an interest rate much higher than it pays on any deposit. It's no wonder that banks make money. It's basically a Ponzi scheme based on debt. It's a fraud. It's a house of cards which will collapse any time soon. And that's just the simple stuff, right? Once you start getting into these exotic um, instruments of investment that these investment banks come up with, all these subprime uh, mortgage and stuff, it just goes crazy. They invent money out of nothing. And that's when it's really really gets frightening. Whilst the bubble is growing, no one looks too closely at how the magic works. And the biggest illegal Ponzi scheme of all time was perpetrated by this guy. Now what he was doing was essentially what banks do every day, but crucially, he didn't have the law behind him. And ironically, he bears a very close resemblance to George Washington. <laughs> <laughs> so the similarity extends even further. Incidentally, just talking about how the money supply works is considered sedition by most governments. Such is the sensitivity over confidence in fiat currency. Goldman Sachs are the biggest financial terrorists in the world. They've been described as a giant vampire squid sucking the lifeblood out of everyone on the planet. And that was the most polite description I could find. <laughs> Goldman Sachs sold subprime uh, mortgage uh, products. <laughs> Goldman Sachs knew these investments were shit. Right? So in order to protect themselves, they took out financial bets that said, these investments are shit and they will fail. Sure enough, those investments failed. And everyone got covered in shit, except Goldman Sachs, who were only guaranteed, they were the only people who were guaranteed to be made money. Now, some people would consider that good business practice, and other people would consider it fraud. Now, if too many people consider it fraud, it becomes a problem for the banks, because the law starts to get involved. So the banks have had this new innovation of lobbying the politicians to change the law on fraud and then apply it retrospectively. And because the banks are too big to fail, uh, the governments are held to ransom. This is like robbing a bank, getting caught, and then at the trial, lobbying the politicians to change the law on robbing banks. 
<laughs> and um, because they, you know, they're, they're too big to fail, they, they have to do it. You, I mean, you think this, I'm making this up. This is what's going on in America. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the last financial meltdown, this side went up. Unfortunately, no bankers jumped. Incredibly, their response was to say, hey, we've lost a lot of money, now give us your money. And our response was, 